this windy afternoon here in Rochester. Welcome to Jeeva's Happiness Hour Quarantine Edition. I hope this is finding you all safe and healthy. I'm Skip Greer, Jeeva's Director of Education, Artist in Residence, and this week we thought it appropriate to begin this hour at the Mississippi Blues Trail Marker honoring Sun House here in Corn Hill. This trail marker was erected during the four-day blues festival Journey to the Sun at Jeeva Theater Center in 2015, and its purpose is to help remind us of the astonishing talent of Eddie Sunhouse, as well as Rochester's importance as a historic hub for great, great blues. Also, part of that festival was the first reading of Keith Lover's revival, The Resurrection of Sun House, which became a full production in 2019. So this afternoon, because the blues can be so potently uplifting, we're bringing some of Jeeva's blues family back together again to celebrate, maybe, maybe sip a little bourbon, laugh and provide through music and stories a little nourishment for the heart. So thanks for joining us. I'll see you again in a minute at Blues Headquarters. And by the magic of Happiness Hour, here we are at Blues Headquarters. All I want to tell you, it is such an honor to be here with you all, and thank you very much. Uh, thanks for seeing the, it's so great to see the Jiva family back together, Jiva Revival family back together again. I'm going to call you out by your first name, and if you just uh, tell us who you are and uh, where you're quarantining uh, and how you got connected with the Sun House Project, whether it was Journey to the Sun or Revival. Let's start with, uh, with Billy. Billy Thompson. Uh, I was musical supervisor. I guess from the get-go, I co-wrote some of the music with Keith Glover. So I was around for Journey to the Sun, thanks to Skip and Jenny Werner, uh, putting that together. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, I really learned a ton about Sun House. I mean, I, I was already hip to him, but, um, you know, I'm very thankful for this experience. And it's great to see you guys again. Jen Lyons as well, who is absolutely stellar. Uh, not to mention Mr. Andrew Wilhelm, who's a great sound designer. And uh, I want to say that uh, I am in Winchester, Virginia, where I dwell, and uh, with my uh, partner and our daughter, and uh, all is well, 62 degrees, and uh, looking forward to uh, everybody yapping as much as I just have. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thanks, Billy. Fred, your turn. Hi, I'm Fred Vine. Currently, I am hunkering down in Henrietta. Mm. And I first became involved uh, in this project in 2015 during the Journey to the Sun Festival. Mm -hmm. I, I believe uh, John Mooney and Brian Williams decided that Rock and Red and myself should join them on stage, which I was very much honored to do at that time. And uh, it, was a, it was a great pleasure. On stage was uh, Joe Beard, the Hall of Fame blues man from Rochester, and John Mooney, Brian, Rock and Red, and myself. And uh, we, had a, we had a nice set in front of the full house that night. It was, a, you know, it was a trip. And I believe Billy Thompson was in the audience that night. This is true. This is true. And that's how I became connected to Revival, because when, when it came time to choose the guitar player for the rock, Revival band, I get a call, I, I think it was in January of 2019. It's like a week before we were going to start. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Fred? So, and I said, oh, I would be honored to do that. Thank you so much, Mr. Thompson, for having me on board. And uh, it was a pleasure. And it, it, was, it was an experience of a lifetime for me, working with all of those extremely talented uh, people, it was, it was just a, a, something I will never forget. Oh, Fred, thank you. And yeah, I will, you did a great job, man. That set that you just described was amazing. It lit the place up that night. Dad, your turn. Who? Me? Who, me? You? My <laughs> name is Tad Bottoms. I am currently sheltering in place with my wife and my dogs here in Rochester, sheltering from the snow, actually, because the weather here is unseasonably cold mm -hmm. and I played bass in the in the band for 
revival and met uh, Billy Thompson through a good friend of mine in the Washington DC area. And when Billy realized he was going to be doing this in Rochester, um, he got in touch with me. And initially, I think I was trying to help him find a bass player. And then he was like, oh, why aren't you just going to do it? And I said, OK, I'm in. And I spent my life as a professional musician. And one thing on my bucket list was to do something like this. I had never worked in a play before. I had never been in a pit band. And it was uh, one of the most wonderful experiences I've had. It was really, really something to work with all the talented actors, of course, all the musicians, Billy and DK and Fred and the inimitable Gen Lions, and of course, Andrew as well. But we had a wonderful time uh, doing so many shows so quickly. Uh, when we came back together to do this a year later, I pulled out my notebook, which is a 110 page script with notes all over it to try and remember what I had done. But we had done so many performances, I never even cracked it once. I was like, oh, this song, I know that. You know, <laughs> like, the stuff is now deeply ingrained in my, in my brain. So uh, it is my pleasure to be here and to participate with all of you. Oh, thanks, Chad. Glad you're here. Thanks, Chad. Daniel, your turn. Ah. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Daniel <laughs> Kelly II. I am here in the lovely state of Virginia in my home base called Winchester. Actually, kind of like 18 blocks away from Billy Thompson. You know, wherever I thought you moved. Oh. No, I came back. You know, I was on a ship. Um, I was the music director as well as the drummer for the famous show Revival at Chiva. Uh, the whole experience was experience for me. It was a huge honor to perform with so many great artists like in Eliza, Clevant, Tad, Fred, everyone on you seen on the screen, especially Mr. Billy Thompson. Um, we actually connected from <laughs> my conservatory, Shenandoah Conservatory, a few years ago. And when I got the call from Billy saying he needed a drummer in New York, no questions asked. I said, just fly me up there, I'll be there, you know. So the whole experience taught me a lot about myself and how to become a better musician as well as a better um, person, you know, because different people came from different walks of life. You have different, you know, mindsets. So you got to work together. So it's an honor. Thank you. Yeah, you were Did I hear quintessential. You were, you were on a ship. Did I hear something? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I just came back home. Well, actually, yeah, United States. Two weeks ago, I was on a five-week tour for Princess Cruise Lines um, to tour around South America. It was a lovely experience. Thankfully, and thank God that no one was sick um, on the ship, not even a common cold, which was shocking. Um, the fruit up there was amazing. The sights were amazing. No rent, no bills. <laughs> it was amazing. You know? uh, and I got to play every single night. I was the house drummer for the ship. Uh, and that was my first time on a cruise ship, first time playing on a cruise. So, yes, I had a little motion sickness the first two nights. But after that, I did my Popeye spinach act <laughs> and muscle it through. So it's an honor to be back on land, you know. <laughs> did you end up staying on that ship for a while? Yes. Uh, actually, the plan was our first cruise, our 12 – Bay cruise, we had passengers, we went down to South America, we had to come back to Florida. And once we heard about the COVID-19 hitting other ships, we were wondering why it was hitting other ships so fast. So the captain decided to stay out in Bahamas for the rest of the duration. And we just lived it up, you know, free food, exercising every day, you know, just golfing. There was golfing. I love golf. And after, um, I was supposed to stay there until April 11th, but they cut my contract short until April 1st. We came back to Florida and we were lucky to actually dock in Florida because when we were coming into Florida, there were, we were hearing other ships were getting denied to dock in Florida. So since we were clean, we got the liberty to get off the ship and just fly our separate ways. Wow. Incredible story, wow. Holy smokes, thank you. 
And Eliza Canning Skinner. Hello. Well, I mean, you just did it for me, I but <laughs> um, oh. my name is Ann Eliza Canning Skinner, and I am currently in Greenville, Georgia, not Greenville South or North Carolina. There's actually Greenville, Georgia. Right. Um, I'm here with my family and with all of our chickens and our dogs and our cats. Um, and I was actually, you guys were in need of a friend, an extra friend during the revival show at Jiva. And I was luckily able to let, just cling on to this opportunity. And I had no idea what I was walking to, but my, what a gift mm. it turned out to be. Um, there's something so enriching about blues and how it connects to the soul. It's so, so deeply and how it's, transferred orally from person to person to person and so it was truly so special of what we conjured and created during revival it was something that i will definitely remember for the rest of my life oh thank you wow lindsay great job hey everyone uh i'm lindsay jones i'm a composer and sound designer for theater and film um i was not on revival and i think i might be the only person here who wasn't but um <laughs> i uh I created a piece, a performance piece for Journey to the Sun that was based on a big sort of sound design presentation that I created that is about Sun House and also his influence throughout the rest of modern music that followed him. And I, I sort of did a long performance about that. Um, but I've worked with Diva for many years, uh, I believe. I've now done 26 shows at Jiva over my career. So um, I go way back with them and I'm really thrilled to be here. I'm currently in Los Angeles, California, um, hanging out there and having a, a, you know, a nice time just sheltering in place. Pretty much know who you are, yeah. I, uh, I think it's actually the first time in four weeks I'm speaking on one of these. Uh, I am Andrew Wilhelm. I am Jiva's sound supervisor turned video engineer. I, I like calling myself the executive producer of Jiva Television. It's my new <laughs> title. Um, and I also had the pleasure of being the sound designer for Revival. Um, it's my first full sound design at Jiva when I started last year. Um, mm -hmm. Incredible to work with this band and entire design team and crew and had to hang out with Jen in rehearsal for quite a while trying to put it all together um but yeah I'm here with my wife in Rochester sheltering in our little one bedroom apartment right held each other yet thank you for everything <laughs> you're doing good news right now Andrew for everything you're doing helping all of us get through this and finally Jen who everybody's thanking for some reason but what's that all about uh so I'm Jen Lyons, I'm from Rochester, and I'm actually right now in the production office at Jiva, at the in production <laughs> office. Uh, I'm now I'm the director of production here, but um, when the show was happening last year uh, for Revival, I was the stage manager for Revival, and uh, also stage managed uh, not the um, Journey to the Sun, but there was two readings, one in New York and then one prior to, and I did both those two, which was fantastic because that very rarely happens that a stage manager gets to stay with something for that for that long so that was amazing um and uh you know i think they're all saying thank you to me because uh in the nicest possible way like i actually don't often have as much chance to interact with the band as i did on this particular show we had the band in rehearsal for quite a bit uh quite a bit longer than normal and and we were all kind of in in the one corner and and even before the before the band all joined us, Andrew was there playing the drum machine with us to try and keep us. So yeah. like, uh, we really worked through a lot of stuff. Figuring out a new musical is really tricky, and so we were in the trenches together, uh, getting it uh, through to opening, and then beyond. I was there with everybody through the run, and and uh, what a fantastic group of people uh, these guys are, which is why I was really excited to. Um, likewise, having been involved in the last few versions of the happiness hour this is the first one where i'm actually joining uh, because i like you all very much um and uh, back at you and uh lindsay actually sound designed the very first show i did at jiva here about six years ago uh it's something like that uh clyborne park was my first show um here at jiva and That's right. the sound designer and um 
and actually Lindsay also skipped did not actually work on a revival so there's two of you he worked on oh, the okay great so there. <laughs> so, um, because ever the stage manager I have to give you all line notes and stuff and that's <laughs> Oh, thank you all. all right, that's viewers, that's our cast of characters right there. So let's see what happens when we put them in motion. We've been hearing about the revival band. Let's hear them right now uh, play uh, Empire State with Fred singing. <laughs> incredible i have never seen a record cover played quite like that before <laughs> what a, what a band. What a band. <laughs> that was awesome DJ. Well, uh, that was, wow that's the first time i've ever seen anything like this before <laughs> <laughs> well, i got a question for you i i know that we, you're trying to find a bandmate can be really frustrating and people go through a lot of different things but you must have gotten so impatient you just decided to raise your own? Is that what happened? Yes, indeed. <clears throat> I can't tell you. You probably understand what a thrill it is for me to be working with my son, Alex. Mm -hmm. And he he's 24 now. And he's a, you know, he's a fabulous guitar player and a really good singer. And he, he's creative. He writes his own songs. And we've got a little thing around town. We call ourselves Divines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. At what point did you know that? When did you when did you have the sense that that's what was going to happen? Well, <clears throat> when he was about three or four, <laughs> he was hanging around the house, and he started humming the note for note, mind you, the intro to the Star Wars movie, <laughs> and he was humming it, you know. And I I recognized the music, but I didn't know where it came from. I said, "What is that?" You know, and he says, well, it's Star Wars. 
But, but note for note, I mean, come on. It was, you know, so I knew right then that he, that he had a very good musical aptitude, no doubt, no doubt about it. Oh, man, fantastic. So I gave, I gave him a, uh, a soprano ukulele when he was knee high to a grasshopper. And he started playing and writing stuff on that thing right off the bat. He took right to it like a, like a, you know, like a duck in the water. Well, uh, let's hear the two of you together. Oh. Let's do that. We're going to do a little Robert Johnson for you. Here's a little traveling Riverside Blues. <laughs>
I loved watching, uh, while we were watching that, watching Fred and Billy actually both singing along was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is coming a little ways in Star Wars, huh? Yeah. He, 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 I hope he doesn't like take over my spot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful. That's wonderful. Actually, uh, that would be nice. Now, and now we've got one more uh, Genesee Delta style. Can you tell us a little bit about it? <clears throat> Actually, the, the name of the tune is Genesee Delta Stomp. And I wanted to create a tune that honored Rochester on the blues map. Oh, great. Uh, basically, the, the style that I'm playing in kind of comes from maybe Blind Willie Johnson or Mississippi Fred McDowell. It's got that same kind of vibe to it. And originally it was an instrumental, but I thought it would sound better if I put some lyrics that you know, paid, paid homage to Rochester as a blues stop. So uh, Genesee Delta Stomp. And somebody, uh, who asked me, Tad asked me the other day, well, where is the Genesee Delta? And I thought, well, it's probably right at Jiva Theater, because you guys are right <laughs> next to the... <laughs> right. I've right never seen no the... Delta around Rochester, but I'm, that's cool. It's all good. Yeah. Poetic, li poetic license is what I, what I get for this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Andrew? Boom. <laughs> kind of a jug band vibe to it with Daniel on the brushes like that. It sounds great. Oh, so good. Indeed. Oh, old May Winter just goes on. <laughs> that's, that's a cure for the quarantine blues right there. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. And I, pray to, I pray to God that I, I know I didn't hit my mute button. I hope you all weren't hearing me. We're hearing me. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, you wouldn't want that. All right. Now, to give us a chance to have a little sip. Uh, Scott Bukowski, uh, who's our uh, guest services uh, uh, manager, now has taken, uh, with, each, with each happy hour, happiness hour, he prepares a special cocktail 
uh, for us to absorb. Uh, <laughs> that usually takes about two minutes uh, to introduce the audience to, and I think that's what we're going to do now. So, Andrew, when you're ready. Hey, all you cool cats. Scott Falkowski, your friendly guest services manager here. Today I'm here to show you how to mix your blues away. If spring becomes summer and our plans are uncertain, one thing is for sure. This drink, the summertime blues, will chase your cares away. What you'll need for this drink is ice, iced tea, lemonade, triple sec, and iron smoked bourbon whiskey. First what we'll want to do is take a highball glass. Today I'm actually going to be using a mason, mason jar. And we're going to fill that up with some ice. Once we have the ice in there, we'll add two ounces of iron smoke bourbon whiskey. To that, we're going to add two and a half ounces of unsweetened iced tea. Once we get the two and a half ounces of unsweetened iced tea in there, we're going to add some lemonade. I didn't have any lemonade at the house today, so I made my own. I took some bottled lemon juice, and to that I just added six glasses of water and one glass or one uh, cup of simple syrup. You can also just add one cup of sugar if you don't have the simple syrup. And once we have our iced tea, lemonade, and our bourbon in, we're going to do half an ounce of triple sec. Once that's all in there, go ahead and just mix that up. Once it's all mixed up, we're just going to garnish that with a piece of lemon. And you're all set to enjoy. Now, this drink can easily be converted to a non-alcoholic drink. We can do, uh, let's do four ounces of iced tea. Four ounces of the lemonade. As I get the lemonade in here, we're going to add some ice to that. And ice. Probably should do that first so it doesn't splash around. Once we have our ice in there, we're going to take a fresh orange. I uh, don't have an orange, so I'm using a clementine, but that'll work just as well. We're going to squeeze that fresh juice right in there. Beautiful. Once that juice is in, we're simply going to take your favorite club soda, if you have a favorite soda, a 7-Up or Sprite, uh, you can add that in. Today I'm just going to use a lime flavored seltzer water. Just top that right off, mix that up, and you're ready to enjoy. Remember to drink responsibly and stay safe. Cheers! Quite literally, what was in this glass? <laughs> Except I used limeade. All right. <laughs> uh, now to one of my favorite songs from Revival, Mellow Peaches, mm -hmm. uh, sung by Analyza. Uh, Sweet. Um, uh, in, 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 without going into too much detail, I, I believe the song about where this fit in Revival, for me, the song was about uh, teaching Charlie Patton a little something about who was really in control. But I, but I wanted to give you the chance to give it a little bit of an intro, if you want to. Uh, are there some words you want to say about the song before we hear it? Yeah, now that I was uh, able to give a little spin on it, I, I really felt the, um, the need to take back uh, one's power, especially with just through expression. And expression through the blues, there gives so much room for frustration and bitterness and the the so much grays and in-betweens of emotions that is typically hard to express in person you're usually crying or um, it's very overwhelming so this is it's so fun because you get to get all the in-betweens and everywhere so many different hues all right here we go and Liza with Mellow Peaches from Revival <laughs> Oh, 
There you go. That was great. Thank you. Great, Annalisa. Oh, thank Didn't you. Didn't even do that one in the show. Oh, man. There's yeah, no juice. wow. That was sweet. That took me away. Thank you for that. Woo! Okay, uh, uh, we've got a, we've got a, a little conversation just for a few minutes with uh, Jenny Warner, Jiva's director of literary programming, who is such an instrumental creative force in the creation of Revival. Jenny and I were co-producers of the four-day celebration, Sunhouse, uh, back in 2015, and I had the good fortune to accompany her in a four-day trip driving a car from Memphis to New Orleans, researching roots along the Mississippi Delta up north. And there were many unforgettable moments for us, but I asked her to give us one. So this is Jenny and her moment. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Skip. <laughs> Welcome to Thank our you. quarantine blues. Um, okay. uh, I've already talked to people about, uh, about uh, the show Revival and about our three-day trip uh, down south chasing the roots of Sun House. And so, uh, since you and I shared that car space for several days, yes, we did. Each other crazy, like brother and sister. Uh, I thought it would be fun to find out what might be the most impactful piece of the trip or moment that sticks with you, even now, these four or five years later. You know, it's a great question because it was such a wonderful trip. But one of the things that I think about often, actually. Do you remember when we went to the Ground Zero Blues Club, mm. which is it's the club that Morgan Freeman purchased and supports in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And um, we were listening, there was a band playing and it was great blues music. And you stepped out for a minute uh. and the musician uh, decided to make the rounds after he was done with his set and he was selling his CD. So he came over to me and of course I bought it. His name was Razorblade. Um, and he had this great story. Once he, he saw me, you know, I think it's such a small town that they know who's from town and who's not. And mm -hmm. so he said, uh, he asked me what I was doing there and I was telling him and he said, you know, um, how well do you know Robert Johnson? And I was like, well, I, I know Robert Johnson's story. And he said, well, I have a story that's very similar. Do you want to hear it? And I said, sure. And he said, well, I told Morgan and Morgan thought I was crazy. So you're going to think I'm crazy too. And I was like, well, you and Morgan. Okay, great. So he starts telling me the story and he takes the CD that I've just bought and it's in one of those white envelopes and he turns it over and he draws a dollar sign on the back, the big S with the two lines through it. And he says, so I think that we live our lives in three scores. The first score happens and he puts a, um, the, the mouth of a snake on the top of the S mm -hmm. and he puts a rattle on the back and he says the mouth, this is where all the venom is. So that's death. Um, and he says, we all start back here at the rattle and we travel along until we get to the first vertical line, which is the first score of our life. And that usually is when you're around 20. And you, you, that's a crossroads, that spot right there. And so you either go backwards, which he said is prison, or you go up and try to take the easy road, or you go through the crossroads and come out the other side where you then continue along like the belly of the S. Mm -hmm. And that's where we face all these trials and tribulations. And then when we're about, so then we get to the second score of our life, which happens when we're, maybe we're about 40 and we have another crossroads that we have to go through. Uh -huh. And you either, you either go back, which nobody wants to do through all those trials and tribulations again, or you go up again, taking the easy road, or you keep carrying along that back end of it mm -hmm. because you've gone through the crossroads. And then you, you go through more stuff and get up to the third crossroads in your life, which he said, you know, maybe that happens when you're 60. And then you have two choices. Either you end up dying, which is morbid, or you, you go up, which is, he said at the time, I thought it was heaven. Because that's when you know, you really know what you're about and you know what you've been put on this earth to do. And he said, he finished telling this story to Morgan Freeman. And uh, Morgan Freeman said, well, that can't be, what is that going up? Um, it can't be 
death. It can't, what, it can't be heaven because you're still alive. So what is it? And he, he said, I don't know then. And so Morgan took his pen and wrote content at the top of that. And Razorblade said, you know what? That's where I am. I'm content. I'm happy because I know what I have been put on this earth to do. And it took me all of those crossroads and all of those trials and tribulations. But now I'm here and I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just, I remember thinking how stunning that was. And we had just earlier that day gone on our own journey to find Robert Johnson's crossroads. Mm. Um, and so, you know, hearing that story at the end of that day, I remember just being really impacted by that. Mm. That's fantastic. It feels like we lived a year in four days. In <laughs> uh, mine is somewhat similar. And I just want, I just want to, uh, I want to give us a short thumbnail for those who might not know the Robert Johnson story. Yeah. Of meeting at the crossroads that's perhaps the most legendary story that there is in music let alone blues music of uh, robert johnson uh early if not one of the earliest blues players uh who is uh legend is that he went off to the crossroads to uh meet the devil and sell his soul for the ability to play the way that he could play and uh and then came back from that crossroads and ran into Sun House, who was his mentor, and said, and Sun House said, man, that boy can play now, he can play. That's the story, and so when you and I went out there, it, I had been hearing of that story forever, and I'd never been down in that area. And because of our relationship with Keith, and because of knowing musicians, to not go to the crossroads that most people know, which is the two guitars stuck on the top of the post, but to actually go where the, and all I'm gonna say is Yellow Dog meets the 61, and not be any more specific than that, and get out and walk out there and feel that, that presence, that spirit, that weather, um, and then pick up some of the dirt and put it into a small green medicine bottle, which sits on my desk now, and reminds me, because I had always thought all my life that Crossroads was the one big chapter, the one big moment, but to remind me that every time I'm stuck, I'm at those crossroads, and I look at that, and realize that the next choice I make will help shape the person that I am and the person that I become. And it stays with me ever since then. So Beautiful. what a trip. Thank you for taking yeah. that trip with me. That was Absolutely. astounding. It was. And now we'll go back to celebrating this with so many different musicians who are here right now. Wonderful. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Amazing. That was awesome. Oh. I'm jealous. I want to be on that trip. Did you, did you go through Rosedale? We did go through Rosedale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of the story, one of the stories that I'll tell as well, uh, because she uh, also wanted one of those moments from me too. It was uh, finding out where the crossroads were, and not not where the two guitars are on the post, but where the crossroads were, right. and going out there with the yellow dog and the '61, and actually finding ourselves out there in a lightning storm. And it's it's changed me. I I put a lot of the dirt into a, a green medicine bottle and I keep it at my desk. And I remember growing up hearing that story and thinking that it was about this one climactic moment in this man's life where everything changed. Uh, and then after walking away from there, realizing that actually what the crossroads are is we come up against them for me every day. And now I pull out that bottle that's sitting on my desk when I have to make a decision like that and realize that that decision is at a crossroads and it can take me to becoming the person that I want to be if I'm just careful and listen to the heart to get there. It was an incredible trip out there. But yeah, wow. whole, another hour down there. It was, it was amazing. Thanks you all for doing this. It's I'm just being blown away by the, by the music. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still in Mellow Peaches land. That was fantastic. Go oh, and now to my good friend, the extraordinary blues player Billy Thompson. Uh, Billy, the first time I heard this song, uh, you had recorded it, if I recall correctly, one night. Might have been the night that it was created, one night in your hotel room. And you forwarded that to me, and I kept it on my phone actually for three years. You don't know that. It, it, oh. It's amazing. It's an absolutely extraordinary song. And I got people, I got people involved in revival uh, for the next three years by simply pulling out your song and saying, listen to this. And they were in. Right. Wow. 
Which one is that? Well, I'm not going to tell you. All of them. Okay, it's for me to find <laughs> out within a matter of moments. Looks like rain. Actually, it is raining right now. <laughs> A lot of flaming going on. Oh, nice. You got the John Lee Hooker thing going on, Bill. It's not great. Man. You know, uh, <laughs> Glover wrote the lyric, and I just sat with it for a second. I don't think I was listening to Tom Waits, but uh, yeah. you know, he's always a great one to listen to if you want to get into uh, that zone. Hmm. But um, but uh, yeah, you know, the tune Thanks. works. It worked in the show. 
it was a little different in the show, but uh, you know, yeah. it was this. The yeah. choreography was was yeah, <laughs> kind of <laughs> tough to sing and and do the choreography, but he did a great job. They did. Well, you can see listening to it why nobody turned away when I played that thing, and everybody was at the that song's on fire. All right, we got one Thank more. You, from from Billy, I asked him if we could play this one because uh, let me, let me play. I'm going to read what I wrote to you, Billy, about this. Um, <laughs> I asked him to play this one by sharing that whenever I hear it, it just spins my head around, makes me reach all the way deep down inside, grab my shoelaces, pull up mightily, and turn myself completely inside out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. <laughs> Let's hear it. this is Noreen, the Billy Thompson band.
for me. Oh, Damn. Woo, baby. Ah. Wow. Where did like that come from, Billy? Thank you. That's incredible. Wow. Thank you, Skip. I'm inside out, but I righted myself again. Before. <laughs> it's all about the shoelaces. <laughs> it's all about the shoelaces. <clears throat> oh, man. Oh, Lindsay. Hello. I have a question for you. Do you remember the question that Jenny and I gave to you when we called you on the phone and asked you to come up for Journey to, into the Sun? What was the task that we gave to you? So, okay, I can, I have a vivid memory of this entire experience and it wasn't a phone call. It was actually, I was there. I was at Jiva. I was teching another show and you came in like on a 10 minute break. You're like, Hey, how's it going? It's good to see you. And I was like, Oh, great. I'm doing great. And you said, yeah, Jenny and I want to meet with you in the next stage at dinner time. Can you just come over and meet us at the next stage at dinner? And I thought, oh my God, I'm being fired. I am being <laughs> fired off of this show. I really am. And I, I, and I thought, I was like, I, what did I do? And so I spent like the rest of the afternoon being like, was the music too loud? Did it, was it wrong? Like I had all these things I thought I'd done wrong. And so then I get over to the next stage and you and Jenny are there by yourselves and you say, we've got this project. We're going to do this big festival on Sunhouse native to Rochester. And I was like, wow, amazing. That'd be amazing. And Skip, you said, how would you express the legacy of Sunhouse through the entire history of recorded music? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have, I have no idea <laughs> at all. And, they were, and he was like, Great, man, we don't either. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, good, yeah. And so, and, and so Skip was like, okay, so we're gonna do this festival in like October. And uh, it was like February at the time. And he's like, so all you've gotta do is come up with like an audio collage that expresses who Sunhouse was what he accomplished and then his entire musical influence through the rest of music leading up to today if you could just do that and i was like uh okay okay sure yeah uh and so i went away and i made this audio piece which was about 23 minutes long by the time it was over and and then i made that piece and I, and i thought okay i think this does a pretty good job of it but when i had finished making it, I was like, oh, is everybody gonna understand what all of this is? Like it all kind of flashes by, it's all just audio. I'm trying to, you know, do all these different things. So I thought maybe I should come up with like a thing where I sort of explain what happened and how it works. So then I sort of created this sort of like performance piece that was like basically like the director's DVD notes, you know, that you would see when you watch a movie for the second time of what everything is. And so that performance piece, I showed up at Jiva, having never done anything like this before in my entire life. And, uh, and you guys gave me a microphone. And so I did that entire performance, which um, I think we're probably going to see a couple of minutes of now. And it's really like as much about Sun House as it is about my own music geekery and how obsessed I am with every facet of music history that there is mm -hmm. and me trying to bring that out through the music of Sun House. And I will... Never forget you taking on this absolutely impossible task so willingly and then doing such a beautiful job with it. Thanks. This is from, uh, this is uh, all, all of the lectures and all the presentations were, excuse me, were filmed by John Kovach and the University of Rochester uh, and, and in collaboration with Jiva. And they're all on YouTube. So viewers who are watching, check this out. You can get the full piece and the rest of you really need to check out what Lindsay did on that day. He's, he's amazing. But here's two minutes of that presentation from Lindsey Jones. So there's a ton of people who cover John the Revelator. People who have no business whatsoever covering John the Revelator are covering, covering John the Revelator, including Nick Cave, which is like, I, I love Nick Cave. Nick Cave is one of my favorite, but you know, like you listen to that cover and you're like, is this a good idea? I'm not sure this is a good idea. I don't think this is a good idea. 
And then Depeche Mode, like, I can't figure out what they were thinking. And I looked all over the place for interviews of, like, you know, explain to me the process by which, you know, a techno band from England thought it would be a good idea to cover John the Revelator. Like, I want to know. And basically, they're like, yeah, no, he just, one guy locked himself in a room, and he did it, and then we came in and sang the lyrics, and then we went to lunch. It was like nothing. <laughs> so... But, you know, it's really interesting to listen to John the Revelator go through all these, uh, these through these different incarnations. Like, what, what it reminds me of, okay, when I, when I got married many, many years ago, um, I, I was in charge of getting a band to play at my wedding, right? So my mother-in-law, she, uh, she asked this local talent agency to uh, send us a videotape for us to choose bands. So she sends us this videotape, and it's got like 30 bands on it, right? All wedding bands. And the... So I, wa I put the tape in and I hit play and right away, the first band is incredible, right? There's 12 musicians, they've got dancers, lights, it's unbelievable. And then the second band is kind of like a little less than that. And then by the time you get to like the 10th band, like the dancers are gone, the costumes that the band are wearing start to look a little worn, you know? And then by the time you're at the 20th band, like, you know, the guitar player doesn't have a leg and the, <laughs> you know, the, I mean, like you're getting into the C section of the band, you know what I mean? Like, that's how I feel about this montage a little bit. Like you just hear John the Revelator start as this pure Sunhouse number and then it slowly begins to turn into a guitar player by, with no leg by the time it gets to Depeche Mode. And um, are there any, I apologize to all the Depeche Mode fans here, by the way. I'm a huge Depeche Mode fan. When I was 16, Depeche Mode could do no wrong. Now, on the other hand, um, so yeah, that's Thank where it's, you. Classic. That's what it's like to hang out at my house for a couple of days, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I need a to classic. see this. <laughs> what is it about? I got a quick question for you. Then I'm going to come to you, Andrew, for, your, for, for, a, for a memorable moment from the show, if I can. But the quick question for you is why, why, why is it, you know, it seems, I don't know if you agree with this, but, but when, you're, when you're, all the sun covers that I've heard, yeah, uh, some of them are, uh, are brilliant. And 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 I hear what you're saying, and the, and the moment I mean, you can tell when something starts. No, this shouldn't be happening. You you shouldn't. This is <laughs> son. This is not. You don't understand where you're pulling this up from. But can you talk a little bit about about what that is, or why that is, or why you feel that way sometimes? If you agree with that statement about people who cover Sun House who maybe shouldn't, is that what you're saying? Or about, or, or about why it's so rich and difficult to cover Sun House. Mm. I mean, it? when you listen to his music, uh, it is the purest form of blues that exists, you know? Like, Amen. you are never gonna get anything that is more pure than a guy singing and stomping his foot, right? Like, uh, you know, like, it, it, that is, that's as basic as it gets. And if you think about it, um, that is somebody who's moved to a point that they feel like this is what they've got to do. They've got to sing it this way. They can't wait till they have a guitar. They can't wait till they have a band. They've got to get those blues out right now. And they're so moved by it that uh, they've got it. They just got to get it out of them. And that's, that's what makes it so incredible and what makes him such a unique and compelling artist. And I think what happens is people listen to that music and they're moved by it in the same way. And they think, wow, this music has so deeply affected me that I want to express how it has moved me. And I think some people have a greater affinity for that music than others. And every, for everyone who does it, 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 it's a great contribution in some way because, you know, I feel like maybe there are Nick Cave fans out there who had never heard of Sun House before. And this, his version of the song is what's going to get them to go listen to that record uh, that they wouldn't have gone to or Depeche Mode or the Pointer Sisters or any number of artists who covered Sun and, and did things with it. So um, yeah, I mean, if you watch the whole piece, I think I sort of try to make a case as to what I think Sun House is really about and why, why his, influence has lasted as long as it has and why he hasn't just faded away into obscurity like you would think mm. um uh but i i do really believe that he is a pure lasting legacy of everything the blues can be 
and what it can give to others. Beautifully worded. Well put. Thanks. Thanks. We, we, and we got so we got so lucky with the with the group of musicians we pulled together for the show. It seemed like every single one of you yeah. knew it and you felt it and you reached down and grabbed it. And I, you know, I, right now I want to I want to get everybody over here to the house tonight. I want to crack open a bottle of bourbon and just play through the night right now. Yeah. <laughs> the address. For me to say I'm not playing, you guys are doing the play. Talking <laughs> <laughs> about. Have you got, have you got a, a, a a a memorable moment? From the from the run of revival, I'm going to come to you too, Jen, in a second. That that pops up in your head that you'd like to share. <laughs> like that you're asking, thing. you're asking, Andrew. I don't know if I have a memorable moment per se. <laughs> it's just, I I don't think I've ever experienced a, a a musical where the band was essentially in the front row of the audience, mm. and the way that made the show feel like it didn't feel like another musical like dk was sitting in the front row's lap mm -hmm. which is a whole like world of challenges from a sound design aspect that I, I don't really want to get into but it was like it was a challenge but it was a cool challenge to crack but just the way it made the show feel overall like you couldn't escape the music you couldn't escape the blues which is i think what we wanted for the show and just Perfect. that whole just the feel of it was was incredible. Great, yeah. thank you, Andrew. Jen, I, thoughts? You know, uh, well, you told me you weren't even going to do this, so I wish I was more prepared because I kept trying to think of like what's the really great story I can tell, and there's just I got no many and all over the map. But I will say that like a really, which I kind of already said in the beginning, but a lasting part of it for me was when the band all joined us, right? So like. Right. I mean, I knew Billy from the workshops and stuff and already like, like loved him very much. But like, as soon as we started bringing everybody else in, like um, into rehearsals, like you guys just, that was really the moment when things really came together for me. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Andrew being there way more than normal as well. Like that was just a really cool part of the process and different from, you know, I've done, I've done a lot of shows and I've done a lot of musicals, uh, but this was a different, this was different and really cool. So, Thank you. Well, thank you all for doing this. Really appreciate it. We've got we've got one last piece to close us out on the way out, and it is um, it is last mile away uh, with Clevant Derricks uh, also singing, and uh, Clevant played Son, and sometimes channeled him, as far as I could tell. Unbelievable. Uh, yes, unbelievable. Yes. Uh, but uh, but this this will take us out uh, and and go on right after this song, so we won't come back to us anymore. But just want to say thank you all. Love you all. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Great to see you again. Good to see you. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Oh, nice thank you. See you, Lindsay. Guys. Take care, man. Thank you. We'll follow up in the pathway of duty. If I work to the close of the day, Lord, yeah. I shall see the great king in all his beauty. When I'm gone, the last of my love the way, Lord, yes, sir. Watch between me and thee While we're absent one from another 
words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in His sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. I'll see you soon. Where I'm going, the last mile. The last mile. Where I'm going, the last mile. Smile.